Hello, I'm Mubaya Day. I'm a writer and I'm also an assistant professor in electronic and communication engineering. I'm from Nigeria, but I currently live and work in Wrexham, which is in the north of Wales, United Kingdom. Today I'm going to be joining the Read the World exercise, which is a collaboration between the International Publishers Association, the World Health Organization and the United Nations Children's Fund. And I'll be reading from one of my books and the title is Naked Truth. Naked Truth is a sequel to The Rejected Stone. And both books are African philosophical books that point to the cultures, the norms, the traditions and values of a riverine community in West Sub-Saharan Africa. So I'm going to be reading out from chapter number one in the Naked Truth. And I hope you enjoy it. Although to be in a small highlight had such a huge history, the most virile and mature of men had their origins rooted in the rich grounds of Odotu, while the boniest and most luscious of women had inconsequentially drawn their sass from the same soil. A cultural heritage and a place of great wisdom would least describe the highlight that produced the greatest swimmers known in the history of humanity, as far as the inhabitants on the highlands of River Hodo could tell. No. Not one of the dwellers of adult was lackadaisical when it came to the subject of swimming. The zeal and impetus to swim was like a tempestuous tide that raged across the hearts of all the occupants of Odotu. From the rattling toadless to the boring adults, reaching to the gossipy maidens and the chattering wives, all had their minds, souls, bodies and spirits engraved with an undying energy and eagerness to swim. To them, swimming was the truest test of courage and strength, and anyone who failed in this physical exercise of life was termed an underdog in their local parlance. De facto, I would say, swimming ran through their instincts the same way blood flowed through their veins, such that without it, there was no life. The best way to define humanity is not at all based on the elements of culture that we see and portray. It is simply man's attitude towards his environment and all that is therein. This, I believe, is the best definition we can give to humanity and culture co-located. After all, it is true that everything rises and falls on attitude. Meet had it that in order to the souls of young boys and girls when needed to the river Hodo, each time their passage into adulthood was celebrated elaborately with a ceremony called Amoe. I also opine that not all myths are true, but one unshakable truth is the acute intent and logical exactness inherent in every myth. This has not only made me a huge fan of history, but it has also sent me far beyond redemption in my love and quest to listen and learn from every tale told, whether in the clear skies of unwavering truth or in the dark shadows of remorseless lies. Amoe was the spiritual rite performed on every boy and girl born in the land of Odotu after 13 reigning periods of their existence. Amoe was in every way a colourful event and oftentimes people came from neighbouring highlands to witness it as it was exclusive to Odotu. At the initial stage of Amoe, there was no dancing and there was no beating of drums. As a matter of fact, the heart of passage into adulthood was commemorated in a close to perfect silence. Parents whose children had come of age to partake in the ceremony would dress in the local attire, while the celebrants would be as naked as man could be. As barbaric as it may sound, Amoe was a cultural heritage and an emblem of pride in Odotu. Young boys and girls being immersed into the river Odo seven times by their fathers, after which the boys hand skirts and sashes from the great bado to Odotu, while the girls in turn hand skirts and braziers from the bado to as well, to cover their naked bodies. This was the crux of Amuwe. No sooner than the last of the celebrants was clothed, 
the whole of Odota would go on the range. The trumpeters of the local flute made from hardwood would blow them at such a high tormenting pitch in various harmonious melodies, while the drummers bashed against the tight-fitted skins of their drums in agonizing joy, as they welcomed the celebrants into adulthood. Amuwe was highly esteemed in Odotu, and it was a ceremony all the inhabitants of Odo looked forward to. From the least to the greatest individual in Odotu, Amuwe was of great significance, and everyone worked immeasurably to see to its fruition every reigning period in Odotu. These songs will not cease to be heard to culminate Amuwe. Naked ye we have come, deep and deep into our ancestral waters, but clothed we shall return under our dome, a place filled with hope and all desires. Children we once were, but men and maidens we've been made, in a fashion way so there, and nothing would make this to fade. Our fathers held our hands, and on the path of destiny we trod, breaking loose from our childish bands, Marching gallantly to a mature world, from our far our mothers watched, with just a wishful thought in their minds. Finally, our eggs have hatched, and Amuwe has put up the blinds. Have you ever been tagged a misfit? Have you ever failed to qualify for the one thing which ought to be deliberate for people's perception of who you are and what you stand for? Have you ever stumbled? only to find yourself languishing in the miry clay of a complete fiasco, even when you didn't attempt to? Have you ever stood still to watch your classmates and contemporaries pass you by, leaving you behind on the slippery floor of an unsure success? Have you ever experienced the lonesomeness associated with the plague of an unpresumptuous lad? If you have, then I wouldn't need this capital of a sergeant to pierce these words into your thinking. Anarchy was no different. Her life was a box of dreams, ravished into ashes by a mystifying inferno. Her quest for a true definition and meaning to life was like finding a precious ring lost in a sunken ship deep down a troubled sea. Beautiful but bitter was our world. For a young lady endowed with an unspeakable beauty, having spooky eyes that would make any man take a second glance, and an almond skin that was without wrinkle, the world was not at an orchestra's feet. As was the true picture of failure as far as the customs and traditions of a daughter could discern. Gorgeous and adorable on the outside she was, but beneath the veil was a heart suffering from the deadly cancer of despair and stigmatization. Anoke had just two people in the world who at least cared for her and who went ahead kicking against all hearts to make her feel important and desirable in life. One was Emashere, Anoke's grandfather, a feeble old man in a dojo, whose strength continues to fail him, like a flower left to rot under the intensifying heat of the sun. In spite of his age, the Masheru went an extra mile to take good and proper care of his granddaughter, if when the traditions of Odotu sometimes challenged this role in Anoka's life. A vivid moment not to forget was when Anoka was precisely 13 reigning periods old and the next celebration of Amuwe was around the corner. The Masheru went all the way just to make the day a memorable one for Anoka. Though her mother discouraged her grandfather's gesture, Emma Sherry still felt that since Anoke was a freeborn, she had every right to experience the passage into her adulthood, as the traditions of Odotu demanded. I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening. Please keep well and safe in these unprecedented times. Wash your hands and God be with you.